what was the idea that you and Kamran Vafa developed with the holographic principle and string theory? What were we able to discover through through this through string theory about uh, black holes, or um, that connects us back to the reality of black holes? Yeah, so that is a very interesting story. I was interested in black holes before I was interested in string theory. I was sure. sort of a reluctant string theorist in the beginning. I thought I had to learn it because people were talking about it. But you know, once I studied it, I I grew to love it. First, I did it in a sort of dutiful way. These people say they've claimed quantum gravity. I ought to read their papers at least. And then <laughs> the more I read them, the more interested I got. And I begin to see, you know, they they phrased it in a very clumsy way. The description of string theory was was very clumsy. And mathematically clumsy or just mathematically the interpretation? clumsy. Okay, yeah. it. it was all correct, but but mathematically clumsy, but it often happens that in all kinds of branches of physics that um, people start working on it really hard and they sort of dream about it and live it and breathe it and they begin to see interrelationships and they see a beauty that is really there. They're not, they're not deceived. They're really seeing something that exists, but if you just kind of look at it, you know, you can't, you can't grasp it all in the beginning. And, and um, so our understanding of string theory in, uh, in 1985 was almost all about, uh, you know, weakly coupled waves of strings colliding and so on. We didn't know how to describe a big thing, like a black hole in, you know, in string theory. Of course, we could show that strings in theory in some limit reproduced Einstein's theory of general relativity and corrected it, but we couldn't do any better with black holes than um, before my work with Kuhlman, we couldn't do any better than Einstein and Schwarzschild had done. Now, um, one of the puzzles, um, you know, if you look at the uh, Hawking's headstone and also Boltzmann's headstone and you put them together, you get a formula for, and they are really central equations in 20th century physics. I don't think there are many equations that made it to headstones. <laughs> 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 and, and they're really central equations, and you put them together, and you get a formula for the number of gigabytes in a black hole. Now, in Schwarzschild's description, the black hole is literally a hole in space, and there's no place to store the, the gigabytes. And it's not too hard to, and this really was Wheeler and Bekenstein and Wheeler, Bekenstein, and Hawking to come to the conclusion that if there isn't a sense in which a black hole can store some large number of gigabytes, that quantum me mechanics and gravity can't be consistent. We got we got to go there a little bit. So uh, so how is it possible? Uh, when we say gigabytes, so there's some information. So black holes can store information. How is this thing that sucks up all light and is supposed to basically be, you know, be super homogeneous and boring? How is that actually able to store information? Where does it store information? On the inside, on the surface. Yeah. Uh, where? Where's? Yeah. And what's information? I'm liking this. Ask five questions to see which one you actually answer. Oh, okay. I'm so gonna ask you say a question. that I should try to memorize them and answer each one in order, just to answer. No, them. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm desperately, okay. <laughs> desperately uh, trying to figure it out as okay. we go along here. So um, Einstein's black holes, the Schwarzschild's black hole, they can't store information. The stuff stuff goes in there and it just keeps flying and it goes to the singularity and it's gone. However, Einstein's theory is not exact. It has corrections. And string theory tells you what those corrections are. And so you should be able to find 
some way of some alternate way of describing the black hole that enables you to understand where the gigabytes are stored. So what Hawking and Bekenstein really did was they showed that physics is inconsistent unless a black hole can store a, a number of gigabytes proportional to its area divided by four times Newton's constant times Planck's constant. And that's another wild idea. You said area, not volume. Exactly. And that's the holographic principle. The universe is so weird. And that's the holographic principle. <laughs> that's called the holographic principle that it's, it's the area. Well, uh, uh, we're just jumping around. What is the holographic principle? What does that mean? What, is there some kind of weird projection going on? What, what the heck? Uh, well, I was just before I came here writing an introduction to a paper, and the first sentence was, the as yet imprecisely defined holographic principle. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Nice. So nobody knows exactly what it is, but roughly speaking, it says just what we were alluding to, that um, really all the information that is in some volume of space-time can be stored on the boundary of that region. So this is not just about black holes, it's about any, any area of space time. Any area of space time. However, we've made sense of the holographic principle for black holes. We've made sense of the holographic principle for something which could be called anti-de Sitter space, which could be thought of as a giant, as a black hole turned into a whole universe. And um, we don't really understand how to talk about the holographic principle for either flat space, which we appear to live in, or asymptotically de Sitter space, which the astronomers tell us we actually live in as the universe continues to expand. So it's one of the one of the huge problems in uh, physics is to you know, apply or even formulate the holographic principle for more realistic, well, black holes are realistic, we see them, but um, yeah, in, in more general context, so, give a more uh, general statement of the holographic principle. 